The World Health Organization says staff and patients still inside the besieged NASA hospital in Khan Yunus need to be transferred elsewhere. After being denied entry for days, WHO staff evacuated 32 critically ill patients earlier this week. Israeli troops stormed the hospital last week, forcing Palestinians there to flee. Some 130 severely injured patients remain there, though, alongside at least 15 doctors and nurses. The situation is very bad and difficult. And ox uh, patients uh, are without uh, electricity, without oxygen. The entire neighborhood around here is damaged and destroyed. The hospital itself has no electricity, has no food, has no water. There's a very few doctors and nurses. They're living here in the premises, working around the clock. If you can think about the worst situation ever, you, you multiply by 10, and this is the, the worst situation I have seen in my life. It's the debris, the light, working in the darkness, patients everywhere. Okay, let's speak now to Dr. Ter Ahmed. He's an emergency room physician who spent three weeks volunteering at NASA Hospital in Khan Yunis back in January of this year. He joins us now live from Chicago. Thank you for your time. Now, since you've been at the hospital, the Israeli army has raided Al Nasser after a week-long siege. The UN described it as a place of death. I believe you've been in touch with people, colleagues there. What have they been telling you? I mean, they said the last week has been miserable. It's been a nightmare. The scenes that they're seeing are traumatizing. And they're asking for some sort of help. They're asking, actually, not to be evacuated from the hospital, but for the hospital to function, for the lights to be turned back on, for them to get the medicines that they need to treat the 150 patients that remain. I spoke to one of the uh, general surgeons there, the last surgeon remaining in the Nasser Hospital, Dr. Khalid. He sent a message to a group of, um, of physicians here in the States. And he just asked for us to be able to advocate for the patients that are there. He says, I'm staring at patients and they need my help, they need my care, and there's nothing that I can do. And he's in this impossible position. And this is something that was predicted by the staff when I was there in January. As the tanks began getting closer to the hospital complex, they told me exactly what would happen. They predicted the events as they unfolded. They said at first, They'll demand an evacuation. Then you'll see drones asking people to leave. Then there will be snipers. And it will culminate in, the, in a raid of the hospital, people being arrested, and essentially the hospital rendered dysfunctional or inoperable. Tell us a bit about your experience at NASA Hospital in January. I mean, what were, your, what were the biggest challenges you were facing then? It was, it was incredibly overwhelming. I mean, Nasser Hospital, after Shifa was rendered inoperable and raided and under siege, Nasser was the last remaining big hospital in the Gaza Strip. It was one of two referral hospitals. So the entire Gaza Strip was depending on Nasser to receive patients, but also to be able to run multiple operating rooms at the same time. I remember my first day there just walking through the emergency department and being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of people that were there. Keep in mind, uh, patient Khan Yunus at the time in January was the center of all military operations for the Israelis. And so we were getting every single day multiple uh, waves of trauma patients coming through the emergency department and, and going into the operating room. It was also people who were sheltering in and around the hospital. I mean, tens, 10,000 people were sheltering in and around the hospital. You saw tents everywhere. And we had supplies that we were using, and we were very short on very necessary things, but it was still operating and functioning. It was this beacon of, of, of health for the entire Gaza Strip. And to watch it over the course of several weeks, slowly but surely be, you know, have the same fate as many of the hospitals in the Gaza Strip, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's also devastating. I mean, the healthcare system has collapsed. But Nasser Hospital uh, shutting down, it's a catastrophe. People will die because they're not going to get the treatment that they need. Nasser was so overwhelmed and so packed with people while I was there. We were treating patients on the floor. Um, we were looking for mattresses to use for patients because there were no more hospital beds. And so it's, it was already a tragic scenario, but the, the physicians and the nurses at Nasser were doing an incredibly heroic job trying to manage. Now this has become a horror story. It's become a nightmare. I mean, it's just, it's really depressing to think about. And now I'm concerned about if Rafa hospitals will be next. When you were there at this hospital, did you ever worry about your safety? 
I mean, I think we started really realizing the seriousness of the situation once we started hearing that the bombing from the F-35s was a couple of blocks away, when we saw the tank reach the perimeter of the hospital and uh, desecrate the cemetery that was across from my window in the hospital. Every single bomb, the hospital would shake. And in fact, while I was there, one of the windows in the emergency department was shelled and broken. There were bullets that were sprayed on the wall of the hospital. I mean, it was, it did not feel like a safe place. And I remember one of the evenings while I was there that we decided to put the mattresses on the window because we were convinced that a bomb would, would go off and the shrapnel would fly through the window, killing us or injuring us. And many of the physicians there had been at previous hospitals. They had fled from Shifa or they had come from uh, Al Auda Hospital. And they told us, I mean, they said that this is this is kind of the script that plays out, is the military starts to get closer and closer to the hospital, and then the hospital gets attacked. And I remember uh, naively thinking, no, I mean, I don't think the hospital, there's no way that the hospital will be attacked. I mean, I think Shifa was such a, a colossal mistake. It was so sad to see what happened at Shifa. It's not going to happen to Nasser. But they, but the doctors there were right, and I was wrong. Um, it was... It was definitely a concerning situation while I was there. And after I left, it only got worse. Israel uh, repeatedly making the point that they target hospitals in Gaza because Hamas operate from them. Did you see any evidence of that? I, I saw quite the opposite. I saw many, many kids in these hospitals. I saw many injured and wounded children, pregnant women. I saw people that were sheltering and were really scared of the consequences of war. I didn't see anything like that. And I want to just point out that these hospitals are so important for the livelihood of the people in the Gaza Strip. It's not just about treating the really injured people or the sick people. It's about having a place where people can shelter, people can have some, some access to some water, and having uh, every now and then some distribution of food. So uh, I think that's the I think that's the way to frame what these hospitals are actually doing. They're they're providing a refuge for people who are scared, who have lost their homes, who have lost family members, who are looking for food and water. Because that's exactly what I saw at Nasser. Dr. Thayer Ahmed, thank you for sharing your experience. An emergency room physician who spent three weeks volunteering at Nasser Hospital back in January. Thank you. Thank you for having me.